Gotcha. Tonight, breaking news, the National Breaking tonight, a local hospital brings in the National Guard to help with COVID-19 surge and fawn fire impacts. And nearly three years since the devastating campfire, one couple is still struggling to find a new place to call home. Plus, Congress comes together to avert a potential government shutdown. Covering Northern California, you're watching Action News Now. Coverage you can count on. Breaking news tonight, the National Guard has been called to Mercy Medical Center in Reading to help with COVID-19 and fawn fire concerns. Hospital officials say two seven-person teams are assisting. The teams make up of six medics and one supervisor. Hospital officials say the request is a plea for help due to a rising volume of COVID-19 patients and a decrease in staff. They say the fire has impacted 30 employees at the hospital. The teams arrived last weekend. Members of the National Guard will be in town for two weeks, possibly longer, depending on COVID-19 numbers in the area. And Action News Now is tracking the latest COVID-19 cases in our area. Today, Butte, Trinity, and Sutter counties all reported two new deaths due to COVID-19. In our area, new cases keep climbing at a slightly lower rate than last week. Shasta reports 125 cases in 24 hours, 29 cases in Butte, 37 in Tehama, and 15 in Trinity. Vaccination rates are also up 1% in both Tehama and Shasta County. Shasta now close to 50% fully vaccinated. Among those 12 and older, Tehama County hit 40%. Butte and Glen have the highest local rates at 55%. And time is up for healthcare workers to be fully vaccinated or undergo COVID-19 testing at least once a week. Today, Action News now visited healthcare facilities around Chico. They say they will not be having any kind of mass firings today because they are still waiting for vaccine proof, religious and medical exemptions to roll in. We did speak with a nurse in Chico who didn't want to be identified, and she says that she is using a religious exemption to keep her job. You don't have to have a signature from the pastor. You simply state your religious beliefs and you can use scripture to back it up. If you don't have a religious or medical reason for not getting vaccinated and you don't get vaccinated, it's just your choice to not get vaccinated, I'm okay with you not working with me because it's putting my patients at risk, it's putting my coworkers at risk. Nurses say they do know people that are walking out because of the mandate, but local health care providers don't see it causing any major impact on staffing. As of yesterday, 82% of Enlo staff were vaccinated and 96% of active Enlo physicians were vaccinated. They are expecting these numbers to go up by the end of the day. And today, local health care workers in Reading lined up to rally against the state vaccine mandate. Supporters of those who refused to be vaccinated came together for the rally. The group was waving flags and signs denouncing the vaccine and the mandate. Many of the people at the protest were former nurses or family members of nurses who don't want to be vaccinated. And despite the signs shown, the person who organized the rally, Arthur Gorman, told Action News Now that the rally wasn't just for anti-vaxxers. What we want to say is that we're here for the freedom to choose. If you want to be vaccinated, we're here for that. If you don't want to be vaccinated, we're here for that. But we want to protect every decision that everybody makes. And so we'll stand by anybody that wants to, to stand with the power of choice. Mercy Medical Center says that 75% of their staff is vaccinated. 
And new tonight, despite a long night of negotiations, Democrats remain unable to reach a deal on President Biden's $3.5 trillion infrastructure deal. But action is set to resume tomorrow. And containment on the Fawn Fire has now increased to 90 percent after burning more than 8,500 acres. Tonight, evacuees are allowed to return home, and the shelter at the Church of the Nazarene in Reading is closed. The fire destroyed 185 buildings and damaged 26. And Cal Fire crews knocked out a destructive fire in Gerber today. Take a look at this video. Flames swept through buildings and travel trailers in Gerber this morning. Firefighters got the call shortly before 930. It happened near San Benito Avenue at Begonia Street. And it's time to get our first check of the weather with Chief Meteorologist Jason Stiff in the Storm Tracker Weather Center. Jason, what are you tracking for us right now? Well, thankfully, the wind is a lot weaker than it's been most of this week. We had a lot of wind gusts between 20 and 35 miles an hour at times around the valley and foothills. It was all that strong wind coming out of the north. But thankfully, as you can see, it is a lot weaker right now. The strongest wind, if you want to call it wind, it's more of just a light breeze. Six miles an hour in Oroville elsewhere, five miles an hour or less. There's lots of calm on here, and that's a nice way to end the month of September, but the humidity still kind of low, even though it is a late hour, mostly between 20 and 25 percent in the lower elevations, higher than that between 30 and 55 percent around the higher elevations. So thankfully we don't have a lot of wind in the forecast for tomorrow. We expect a very quiet beginning to the month of October. The temperatures will be a little bit cooler than they were today, but still Pretty nice, very seasonal for the first day of October. Upper 70s and lower 80s for the foothills, upper 80s and lower 90s for the valley. The wind at or below 15 miles an hour. Humidity, though, still pretty dry in the teens. We do have a big ridge of high pressure coming our way, but also another storm wants to move our direction. I'll let you know how it's going to affect you coming up in my complete storm tracker weather forecast. Thank you, Jason. Two campfire survivors who lost everything on that day are still trying to find a new place to call home nearly three years later. Action News Now reporter Esteban Reynoso spoke with the family today and the good news they received that will bring them one step closer to their own place. It's been nearly three weeks since the Ericsons have been living at this Best Western here in Chico, paid for by their own money out of their own pockets. But now, some hope. It'll not only be I want to go home so bad. Right now, Crystal and Mike Erickson have nowhere to call home. For months after the fire, home was this, a travel trailer at the FEMA assistance camp. But it still wasn't up to standards for Crystal and her disability. Now, when the disaster happened the next day, Crystal went into the hospital for a month and, yeah. and then a nursing home for, what, three months? Three months while we're waiting for FEMA housing. And just a day after we interviewed the Ericsons on September 11th and them being the final family at the campsite, they were kicked out. Every, every day. Every since. day we've had to pay. It came off my card now. We've had to use all of it on Long this. It seems like you go one step forward and 10 steps back. This whole process of finding a new home has taken months, a process they feel is worse than losing everything in the fire. Well, it's been tougher than losing everything we own. Losing our friends and, and neighbors and, and the community is real hard because I call it the, the town formerly known as Paradise because it's just not, not quite the same yet. Now, with the help of Coral Apple, the Ericsons are moving to another hotel and soon hope to live close to their son and have a caretaker for Crystal. Neighbor helping neighbor, we'd probably be, you know, close to Comanche Park right now. The Best Western here in Chico is fully booked through the weekend, so the Ericsons will have to go to another hotel in the city, and then they'll go up to Red Bluff on Monday morning. In Chico, Esteban Reynoso, Action News Now, coverage you can count on. The Ericsons say the money they were trying to save was to go towards rent or a handicap accessible van for Crystal.